What up, everybody? Welcome back to another episode of the Nerd Gym Report. I'm your host, Pablo, and joining me, as always, is Mr. Brian Schultz. Brian, Marvel Potpourri, Brian. <laughs> I haven't... Potpourri was, is usually a Jeopardy... T- uh, yes, it uh, is. Good call. <laughs> right? Yes, it is. There's a lot going on at Marvel. Concerns, delays, castings, uh, talk of redemption. I can hear the music behind the, ch- the, the, the speech, whoever gave it about coming back from this because they're down in the dumpsters. You are in the same vicinity where WB used to be. Yep. Bars. Let's start listing them and talking about each one. Brian, what, what what's going on with Marvel? All right, here we go. Let's start State of the Union, top of the house, and then we'll go project by project because there is a lot. Okay. Bob Iger, part of the uh, earnings call, announced that Marvel's output will be cut to officially two to three films per year and two shows per year. Follow up to that, Louis Desposito then told Empire Magazine, here's the quote, react to. It's been a rough time. If we had just stayed on top, that would have been the worst thing that could have happened to us. We took a little hit and we're coming back strong. Maybe when you do too much, you dilute yourself a little bit, but we're not gonna do that anymore. We learned our lesson, end quote. All right, so there it is, Pablo. Two to three films a year and two shows a year. What's your reaction to that? What's your reaction to the quote? That's a good first step, but none of that means anything until we see that first movie and it shows that some thoughtful attention to what story is being told was really at play rather than going back to the glory days of billion dollar box office. So that's what I think of that. I would go, if it was me, I would go more formal. I would actually say two films a year, one summer, one holiday, one live action show, and one animated show. Because I think Marvel Animation has earned the right to have a show every year right now until they blow it. Between What If and X-Men 97, they have done enough to show that they should be giving dollars to that house. Oh, yes, definitely. For sure. That's how I would do it. You'd have one Marvel property per quarter, and you can eventize each of the four things. That's how I would do it. I mean, there's the thing is with, with Marvel animation, there's just so many stories you can tell and do with so many different characters, and it really be dope. You know what I'm saying? Because of how these guys are doing these action sequences and and displaying these powers. So I'm all for doing what WB the DC used to just be pumping him out. Yeah, and I was fine with it because it was some. A lot of it was dope. There were some horrendous ones, but um, for the most part, there were a lot of good ones, and, and I appreciated that. Um, and, and I, I am appreciating Marvel Animation uh, thus far. I'm. I wish I could have. I wish I could talk to one of those guys and, and ask like, what was it that started this? this uh, thought process of we got to do better than what we've done in terms of Marvel animation? It's a great question. I don't love the quote. There is something about every quote in Marvel executives right now to me, Pablo, that feels like a the coach of a team that won titles and every year we get further away from those titles, but they act like they're still a championship team. Him saying, that if they had stayed on top, that would have been the worst thing possible. Come on, come on now. If you'd been that good, nobody be complaining and your box office wouldn't be an issue right now. Your budgets wouldn't be an issue right now. Tell that to Jordan, Johnson, Magic Johnson. Tell those those guys. They want exactly. to win every year. <laughs> exactly. Tell them Tell them the best thing that could have happened to them was to, to go- To lose. To, to win 25 <laughs> games and go to the lottery. <laughs> I, could, I could guess what their response would be. The quotes also to me reek a little bit of, they're still, and I think Kevin is guilty of this from what we hear. They're still stuck in that past. Like that was an era. Close the book on it. That's not coming back. And that's okay. I, I think the more time they spend trying to recapture the magic of Endgame, the more likely they are to fail at it. Certainly. It has to be new frontiers and new directions. Right. Like, I think that's part of what makes X-Men 97 great. It is clearly 
a companion to the original show, but it's not trying to imitate everything about the original show. They are finding new avenues of growth in their storytelling. That's the manual. Yeah. And until I see a quote kind of saying that the period leading up to Endgame is never coming back, and we're focused on the next generation of that, I don't have a lot of confidence, to be quite honest, that they're going to be able to deliver the kind of big screen product in particular that we want to see. It's kind of difficult, especially when you've been doing it for as long as Marvel's been doing it and it has been successful as long as they have or were. And you got these vets who perhaps it's just time to move on, still trying to find that magic again, like you said. Yeah. And it's like, yo, you got to get new blood. Yeah. That's what the I'll, draft I'll put, is I'll, for. I'll, I'll put the email at the bottom uh, of the screen. Hit us up anytime. And we'll talk. <laughs> okay. In the pre now it's going around the table on projects. Shang-Chi 2. <laughs> Remember, the first one came out in 2021. We're already three years away from that. So Simu Liu on The Tonight Show said, quote, this is where I use all the mental gymnastics that I possibly can to answer this question, meaning will it happen? But I will say this, it's definitely happening. I should probably lead with that. I think I speak for myself and Destin, meaning Destin Daniel Cretton, our returning director, so I guess he is a great contractor to do that, when I say we're so beyond excited to jump back in, we really are, end quote. How long can they go between one and two of this series and have people still, I guess, care? And I like the first more than you did, but I'm just saying, like, how long? How long is too long? I think it's already been too long, in my opinion. And from what it sounds like, we're probably another two years out, two, three Minimal. years out. Minimum. That's too long. It's like, why do I care? I mean, <sighs> well, look at Iger's self-imposed calendar. There's only, there's not, where's the room, right? They I can't wait for you to read the, his quote, Iger's quote. Well, I'm just saying, like, if he's saying two to three films a year tops, they were already spoken for for 25 and 26. So, like, now we're into 27, 28. So, you're going to have a Shang-Chi sequel that comes seven years after the pandemic? Disney Plus movie? <sighs> <laughs> I mean, ironically, it's the best reviewed thing they put out since Endgame. Like, statistically true. Yeah. But it feels kind of stale. And I liked it, but it feels kind of stale. As you guys already know, I didn't like it. You did not. Yeah, probably you No, know, I didn't dislike it, Ryan. I was, I was just disappointed because of my expectations that I had for... The character of Shang-Chi. Never mind the movie. The character of Shang-Chi. Brian. Master of Kung Fu. This movie really wasn't really about that. Right? Uh, so that was my disappointment with the movie. I, I just see I, I, I've been there, done that. To me, it just looked like Jackie Chan. A Jackie Chan movie uh, in terms of the martial arts. It wasn't really that um, that breathtaking. but uh, Which was the point. I mean, yeah. that's the thing. That's a take. Their take was Jackie Chan. That was the inspiration. It was not Bruce Lee. I mean, that's, you know. And that's disappointing. It's like, how if I'm in that room, I'm like, yo, guys, how are we not making this a, a, a not closer to a Bruce Lee sort of style aesthetic than Jackie Chan, really, yo? Ironically, or coincident, not, not maybe not coincidentally, it's not a perfect movie and it's not necessarily a classic, but Monkey Man, little action movie that came out a couple of months ago, they did try to mimic Bruce Lee very openly. And in fact, there is a seat in this final sequence, they do a modern riff on the end of Enter the Dragon with all the mirrors and the glass. Oh, okay. They do a spin on that. And okay. Dev Patel was very open about saying, you know, look, nobody's Bruce Lee. But that's where we got our ideas from. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So it, that's the thing. It, once Disney made the choice, Jackie Chan is our template, this is what you were going to get. And they gave you a pretty good facsimile of it. It just yeah, wasn't what you and what a lot of people might have been looking for. 
Yeah, I mean, like I've seen it. Jackie Chan is Jackie Chan. Certainly, Bruce Lee is Bruce Lee. But that feeling of like, oh, this dude is nice. You know, <laughs> that wasn't that for me. What else, Brian? All right. So you want the Iger quote? Yes. Um, I think you're talking about <laughs> for the man for the man who started out by saying we weren't going to do sequels. That was when he first got back in the seat, when he had that whole spiel about how they needed to have a quality idea to justify a sequel, and they had greenlit too many sequels where they weren't ready to do it. He now is going the other way, saying they're leaning back into established IP, quote, and the IP that we're mining, including all the sequels that we're doing, is second to none, end quote. All the sequels. When I read that line, Brian, I was like, sequels? <laughs> <laughs> it reminded me of the dude that said playoffs playoffs really get more <laughs> get that quote come on sequels you but you said this yeah all right but you know what sequel you know what leaning into sequels is code for say say because by definition you're choosing a property that's already been released and audiences already know so this is where it gets a little dicey He's looking at the failure of Lightyear, the failure of, what was it, Strange World, the failure, the semi-failure of Wish, the failure of, what was it, Elemental? Elemental actually wasn't a failure. One, I'm making a lot of money. It just started slow. He's looking at those as original properties, and he's saying, not good enough. We lost money on a lot of these. So now we're going to go back to Frozen 3 and 4 and... And, you know, we're, we may not, in the Marvel side, we're not going to do as many new characters. We're going to do, you know, we're going to lean on the Cap, you know, Captain America 4, like Thor 5, whatever you want to call it. I think it misses the point of why those properties didn't hit, though. Like, they weren't well received for multiple reasons, right? There are people who just thought they weren't good. Storytelling wasn't good. Animation wasn't great. The messaging was too prevalent. Pick your poison. Like, had they made another Frozen, had they made another Iron Man, I don't think we're having the same discussion. So I think he's conflating audiences. He's saying audiences don't want original programming. And I'm like, no, they want good original programming. You're conflating quality with originality, in my opinion. And now you're going to play it super safe with all of your properties, Marvel included. I mean, I guess that's okay for the bottom line. I just don't know if that's great for us necessarily. Yeah. You need some risk somewhere, yeah. in my opinion. But What's next? All right. So let's go to Thor 5. Speaking of, quick reaction. This is not confirmed. It's not George Miller, director of Mad Max. Furiosa coming out in a couple weeks. Just worked with Chris Hemsworth, Mr. Thor. Apparently he had a great time. And someone asked him, would he direct Thor 5? And his response, I would work with Chris Hemsworth on anything. anything. <laughs> I really would. He's a wonderful actor. He's got a range of all the skills. I mean, athletic, physically. you got to be athletic emotionally, intellectually, to take on these very ultimately fairly complex any type of roles. Now, this is the guy who was supposed to direct a version of Justice League way back in the day. That's like a great story unto itself. Yeah. But he is a different kind of director who is generally well regarded. What's your take? I tell you, if we get a headline tomorrow, just unsubstantiated, we get a headline tomorrow, George Miller is taking over Thor 5. What's your reaction to that? I can see how it played out. Based on the conversations that we've had and where Chris Hemsworth is at in his career and what he wants, he wants to follow along the same path that uh, Arnold, um, you know, did in terms of working with uh, good directors. And again, Chris Hemsworth wants, not this necessarily that he wants to accolades, but he wants to do good work. Yeah. Right? And then... Uh, I, I can see Chris Hemsworth talking to Kevin Feige. I'm pretty sure he, she can, she'll show up at Kevin Feige's house at whatever time. Be like, yo, Feige, let's talk. Uh, I really want to do this. Thor Love and Thunder was an atrocity. I admit that. 
and I want redemption. I want to get, you know what I'm saying? I want to do this. And he'll pull rank just like RDJ did when he got uh, Shane Black to do Iron Man 3. That's a good one. So Chris Hanworth is going to be like, yo, my turn. That's the way it would have gone, Brian, if it happens to be the case that George Miller does take on this uh, uh, this uh, t- this project. Look, I'd want to see it. I don't know that it would be great because he's a very – first off, Disney would have to get out of his way because he is a guy who kind of goes in the desert literally. You listen, read all the stories. The people working on the movie have no idea what the movie's going to look like. They literally are like, I have no clue what's happening. And then all of a sudden he pulls it together and posts and they're like, oh, that's the movie I worked on? That's basically the reaction of everyone who's ever worked with him. But he is considered a genius. And you can't argue with some of the stuff he's... I mean, Road Warrior is amazing. Um, I mean, I enjoyed Mad Max Beyond Thunderdome. And then Fury Road is generally considered one of the better action movies of the last you know, 10, 20 years. So his take on Thor would not be silly. That I can tell you. And the action would be very practical, which would be kind of interesting to see. In this Thor? world, I, I just the curiosity alone would get me interested. So you know, it clearly seems like you have a new relationship there that that might be might interesting. But then, before we leave Thor, Chris Emsworth's been saying a lot. We got a show coming out about some of the other stuff he said, but he decided to um, pick up the hammer and take a few swings at some of the directors who've been taking shots at Marvel. You know, Martin Scorsese, Francis Ford Coppola, all those types. So when asked about the criticism, he said, quote, it felt harsh and it bothers me, especially from my heroes. It was an eye roll for me, people bashing the superhero space. Those guys had lots of films that didn't work, too. We all have. When they talked about what was wrong with superheroes, I thought, cool, why don't you tell that to the billions who watched them? Were they all wrong? (laughs) End quote. Wow. (laughs) Hey. What do we say? The numbers don't lie. Not even the numbers, Brian. Just go to those reaction videos of people in the theaters reacting reacting to the movies the way they did. I've never seen anybody react to Martin Corsese films like that. <laughs> no, it's beyond. I mean, you come up, oh, that was a good movie. Funny, blah, blah. But nobody's yelling and screaming. I'm sorry. Your movies don't do that. Francis Ford Coppola, you in, you're there in awe just watching good dialogue, but you're not jumping out of your seat for nothing. Unless you gotta go to the bathroom. Because <laughs> the movies are so long. Yeah. So. And he did add one other thing. He said, quote, and cinema going did not change because of superheroes, but because of smartphones and social media. However, superhero films actually kept people in the cinemas during that transition. And now people are coming back. So they deserve a little more appreciation. I think it's just interesting considering, you know, he just had that quote about wanting to work with all these directors and not being happy with necessarily some of the looks he was getting. And I was reading this and being like, you know, not necessarily that that's burning that bridge, but like there's definitely some real, there's some spice, you know, to this defense. And certainly, but again, Brian, certainly these guys are in the Hall of Fame, right? Uh, yeah. Doing what they do, but then they're, they're not the end all be all of it, right? They're certainly the people that you respect and stuff like that, but you, they have a perspective that they did their movies a certain way, whatever, right? But now there's a new generation. And uh, their perspective on film is sort of, someone would say, bougie, maybe. And uh, I guess Chris Hemsworth ain't, ain't, ain't even having it in terms of what they were able to accomplish. Man, I would defend that as well. I would, def- I would be standing right next to Chris Hemsworth like, what, what, let's go. Let's go, champ. <laughs> <laughs> let's go, champ. Let's go. What, what else? There's no way, if you were in those theaters, if you were one of those people that were jumping up and screaming when, when Cap got the, when when Cap showed up in uh, Infinity War with the train passing by, I was yo, I was there, I was there for all of it. Hundred percent. I never once thought of Godfather. 
Which nothing. is still a classic, to be yeah, clear. But yeah. when, it, when it's on uh, on TV, I'm like, oh, nobody. I, I got plans. That's it. You know what I'm saying? This, those movies are classics. Goodfellas, Clyde, all those. But don't throw shade at something that yo. Yeah. No, I. I mean, Hemsworth's got them on that, right? It's like, what did what did Rashid Wallace say? Ball don't lie. Yeah, box don't <laughs> lie, man. Box don't lie. Fantastic Four. Let's hit a couple of news items here. So we got a couple of people added to the cast. One very famous, one kind of pretty well-known character, more of like a character actor. Mm -hmm. um, so Ralph Innocent is officially been cast as Galactus. So we, we now have a surfer and Galactus confirmed casting in the movie. And then John Malkovich, the legend, in an undisclosed role in the film. Your reaction to those two names? Innocent. I, I've never heard of him, but I, I did watch a few videos of people talking about what he's been in, and I, and uh, I'm not mad at the choice. I, I thought that was fantastic, great, it's just like what I would imagine Galactus uh, sounding like. I mean, he sounds very similar to the, the Galactus on the Silver Surfer animation show. So uh, I'm cool with that. I mean, Brian it doesn't matter to me, man, because Galactus to me shouldn't even be in this film. So they can hire the best Galactus himself. <laughs> they can get Galactus himself. I'll be like, you know what I'm saying? You, you shouldn't be here. It's too early. That So when I step back, because we had the discussion about Julia Garner as Silver Surfer, and now we get this news. I don't know if they could have kept it under wraps in this day and age. But... It's interesting to me that they were willing to just put those two characters out there in the cast list. Because it strikes me that there is a world and there was a time in Hollywood where you would have not told people who those people were playing and tried to surprise everyone with the reveal that Silver Surfer and Galactus would be in this movie. I don't know how I feel about that. Maybe they just felt like they couldn't keep it from the fans long enough to get this project done. But I feel like in telling people now, yes, you know, Surfer and Galactus are in this movie and apparently they're gonna be pretty relevant parts. Like, let speculation begin about how they're gonna do it. I don't know. It's, it, I mean, I'm with you. I think this is too soon, too much too soon, but Maybe again, they this is it does a little bit feel like to me a little lack of confidence in the Fantastic for themselves. Given the past failures, they're deliberately putting well known big characters in the cast list to get people interested so they shell out their dollars, even if it's eh, we'll see. Yeah, they're hiring Brian, I, and I'll say this because people are saying Pascal is safe. Yeah, he's a safe bet because he's a great actor. I think he put. Whichever character that he plays, he does a good job in making you believe that's the character that he is. So that was the whole point of that. And I'm quite, and I'm, I, and, and honestly, I don't think there was a lot of any, everybody that they were trying to get on this weren't, weren't, weren't they weren't trying to be on this. So uh, Pat, Pedro Pascal took it as an opportunity for a, another gig, and he probably got a good paycheck for it. One thing that has me curious, Brian is that this is based in another universe, right? New York City is going to take us someplace else that not, that is not as familiar. So it'll be interesting to see the look, the aesthetic, the tech. Uh, that's what I'm mostly um, looking forward to seeing. But other than that, I am not looking forward to, to a redo of The Rise of the Silver Surfer. Which leads to their indications are they're trying to get this project in front of the camera by the end of this July. Now, officially, Fantastic Four is supposed to come out July 25th of 2025. So that would put you exactly 12 months for an entire shoot and post of a movie of this magnitude. A lot of fans are concerned about that. My speculation, Pablo, it's going to be delayed. I don't think, and I said this, I told you this when we did our 2025 thing. I just thought a lot of these movies would push. And if Bob Iger, again, is saying we're cutting the Marvel output, we well, only have the one movie this year with Deadpool. But next year, like Brave New World is already in the can. I mean, they're reshooting it, but you know what I mean? Like they've already, they're at the five yard line on that one. Thunderbolts are basically done filming, at least primary photography. 
So those two are going to go. They're going to be put out, I think. Which kind of leaves, all right, if those two slots are taken, now you're left with, can you squeeze in Fantastic Four? Can you squeeze in Blade, which they're saying is going to shoot in the fall? And then you still got the renamed or whatever Kang Dynasty is going to become. There's just no way they're all going to make 2025. I think Fantastic Four is pushing to 2026 or maybe to the end of 25 at the earliest as the third Marvel movie. So it yeah. won't be opposite Superman. Le- Point is, it won't come out two weeks after Superman Legacy. That's my expectation. Yeah, it's going to be very interesting. If if this, if the timeline from when this movie films and when it comes out, if is if they're on schedule, man, you, all you're doing is is going in there, biting your teeth. I mean, biting your your fingernails in anxiety of uh, did they do it again? Did they ruin Fantastic Four again? And this time, Marvel. Yeah. This time, Marvel, Brian. Not no other person. Not no, you know what I'm saying? No hired gun to do the MCU messed up Fantastic Four. I don't know if we're going to go that far as to saying that they're going to mess it up, Brian, but the bar is low. (laughs) The bar is low, but the bar is high, right? In the sense that, I don't think this can be a middling result either. Like, I think it has to, if they're going to do it, it, they're looking for this to be a franchise starter. Like, it has to be a real hit. And they're spending a lot of money on it still. Let me ask you this. Are they the only heroes that exist in this world? Well, the current Marvel trend would say you will have cameos because they've been trying to stuff all these projects with extra characters. I hope not. I hope if you're going to do that, make it more like an Easter egg, non, you don't, like, you don't see the actual character. If you want to make a reference to the bugle or something, you know, like do something like that. But why rush would be my, what, what is the rush? I mean, and you have to get this right. And I've just pointed out to you, oh, by the way, to your point about Spider-Man, in theory, the Tom Holland Spider-Man 4 is shooting this fall too. And they want to get that out. So does that count against the three film limit? If it does, then we're out of room for sure. In which case, Fantastic Four should definitely go to 2026 and just keep putting those Avengers movies. What is the rush? You got no lineup. So just keep waiting until you're ready. So to me, I don't, I don't see it. If you want to shoot this summer, that's great. Give them all the time in the world to make it look good. Because this, this is also one where the VFX could really have an impact on how we feel about it. Yeah. Right? If Reed looks bad, if Sue looks bad, if the Torch looks bad, if Surfer, Surfer looks bad, if Galactus looks bad, people are going to talk about that. Yeah, you can't I mean, be She-Hulk in this, man. You cannot do that yeah, to these characters. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, certainly. I think Galactus is going to look awesome. I think they're bad. That's where the bar is low. <laughs> yeah, I mean, <laughs> there's not there's not a lot you have to do here, guys. <laughs> Just make him look like Galactus. <laughs> you know, that's it, and you're good to go. And we'll be there like, oh, snap, Galactus, you know? But um... And by the way, if they do make Galactus look good, that's good. Pablo's going to have another aneurysm about why we don't have Voltron. Just just for the record. I can already tell you. <laughs> hey, Not that it's the same character, but the scale of the character. The scale, man. The scale. Will make you think that. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah, let us know what you guys think of this Marvel potpourri of news. A uh, lot of them uh, interesting news. People say one thing, then they decide we got to do something else. Tight timelines for some of these projects, Brian. Let's see what they're able to to, uh, to bring to us, Brian. Let's see if they're able to uh, bring back that magic like they say they want to. Let's see if they're able to do it, Brian. I always like a good comeback story, especially if you see potential of that happening the anticipation of a win let's see if they can do that yeah. let us know in the comment section below what you guys think and we'll see you next time on the nerd gym report the show goes on yeah!